Hello everyone, my name is Gabby, and welcome back to the Dragon Ball Super Review. This time reviewing episode 74. Gohan and Jaco quickly clear up their misunderstanding and find out what's going on. In the meantime, Barry blackmails Coco to try and cause a scandal between herself and Gohan. While Coco can't bring herself to do it, Barry still manages to get some incriminating photos of Gohan and tries to blackmail him and Videl with it. It just doesn't work out. But as Barry leaves empty-handed, he gets infected by Watergush. With its power, he successfully kidnaps Pan. With the evil in Barry's heart, Watergush becomes pretty powerful. Enough that Gohan as the great Saiyan man has to go Super Saiyan to defeat him. But a final Kamehameha, I mean great Saiyan man beam, defeats Watergush and provides an awesome impromptu final act for the upcoming movie. Except, as Jaco goes back into space, Watergush escapes yet again. So, what did I like about this episode? Well, first of all, there were a lot of really, really nice character moments between a lot of the characters. You know how last week I was saying the one thing I don't really enjoy about Gohan and Videl's characters in Supra is oftentimes they just feel a little bit too perfect and that they kind of just have everything they've ever wanted in life and they don't really struggle and there's no real conflict in their lives. But, you know, this episode we kind of got to see those conflicts and we got to see them actually react to those conflicts with really, really interesting moments. You know, like Gohan explaining to Coco that even though he can fly and shoot laser beams out of his hands, it doesn't mean that he's perfect and he understands everything that he's going to do for the rest of his life. And Videl also explained to Coco that there are these moments that, yeah, where she might actually be a little bit scared, but she still wants to put on a brave face because she wants wants Pan to think that like her parents are these invincible heroes even if they're not actually perfect. So yeah basically you know I was worried that these characters felt a little bit too perfect now it's like it was basically just showcasing no they're not perfect and they just feel like real people now it's like it was really really nice. Who wrote this episode and how did they find my fan fiction? Not to mention this episode you know Gohan was actually surprisingly pretty badass. Like that moment where Barry is harassing everyone and then Gohan just kind of like politely grabs him and he's just like telling him to leave. And then when Barry doesn't want to leave, Gohan just kind of just pushes him a little bit and then he just sort of shows off just, just how strong he is and he's just like, yeah, listen, get out of here right now. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was not expecting that. He got to do really cool stuff in this episode and he felt legitimately badass without having to get some kind of rage boost or becoming the strongest character in the show. He legitimately felt like a character I'm like, I really think this is really cool. He did cool stuff. It was awesome, okay? I don't think Gohan has had like a cool moment this entire series. Maybe like him fighting Tagama, that's basically it. For a character who, at least from the fans' point of view, has often kind of just become the butt of all jokes lately because he's just not as strong as he used to be and blah blah blah, and the series has done a very good job of trying to hammer that in, the fact is, no, Gohan is can honestly be really cool if you give him the right amount of focus and make the conflicts particular to him, and they, they did that this episode, and it was cool. Like, Gohan going Super Saiyan and Great Saiyan Man and just, like, beating him, and I was like, that's cool. Even if Gohan isn't the strongest character in the show, he can still be cool. He can still do things, and they actually let him do things in this episode, and I just really appreciated that. As to what I didn't like about this episode, this isn't really the fault of the episode, but rather just sort of an implication as to what might be happening next arc, and that is that Gohan's trump card, when he was kind of like in trouble, was basically just going Super Saiyan. And I am worried that if the fact that he went Super Saiyan here kind of implies that him going Super Saiyan is also just going to be, that's all he's going to do in the Universal Survival arc, that's just his power, is just going Super Saiyan. You know, just like how it was used in Resurrection F, where it's just like, he's normally just fighting untransformed and then he goes Super Saiyan, but it's like this temporary thing and that's it. Regardless of whether this is consistent or not, I honestly, if this is what it's going to be like for the Universal Survival arc, that is honestly really, really disappointing. Because, I mean, first of all, it does basically just kind of deny that his ultimate form and Super Saiyan 2 ever happened in the first place. And, like, the fact is, you know, those forms, like, they're big, they were big important milestones in the series. And that they are forms that the fans have connections to, and, like, legitimately in interesting parts of the series. Like, if, if you just kind of remove them, it's basically just like saying that everything that happened before the Cell games for Gohan just doesn't matter. There is no continuation there. He just kind of lost all that power, completely lost it, and it feels like those parts of the story aren't even important anymore. The fact is, I can't think of any other character who actually lost those unique forms and unique abilities that they had beforehand with no explanation other than just they haven't been training much. And like, I, I get it, I get it. Like, I, I kind of understand there can be a logic there that you could say this could make sense, but 
it's still, it does feel like the story's just kind of going backwards for Gohan and only for Gohan for no apparent reason other than just like merch. And second of all, if this is the case, it's going to make that whole Gohan is training again subplot in Dragon Ball Super even more pointless than it already was. Because honestly, the fact is, the only thing that you could legitimately say you could get out of a, a Gohan deciding to start training again plot is having it to the, like, the next arc where he starts fighting, he will be stronger than he was in Resurrection F. Because he started training again, because he started training again, he got stronger. And that is like the justification you use so that the next arc Gohan will be stronger than he was in Resurrection F. But if he's just going Super Saiyan in the Universal Survival arc, then well, no, you don't, he's probably hasn't gotten that much stronger since Resurrection F. And then of course, of course, it leads to the question that, you know, why would they put that subplot in there in the first place? If Gohan wasn't going to be fighting for the next two arcs that after, the, after they teased it, and even then, even when he starts fighting, he's not even that strong? Like, then what was the point? That is just a complete waste of time. The next episode, Goku is getting a little bit bored and he wants someone to train with, so he ends up going to Krillin. And I've got to say, I'm really excited for this. Like, Goku and Krillin's relationship is honestly one of my favorite parts around the early parts of Dragon Ball. It is just such a beautiful friendship, and I just really like the fact that they might be revisiting it again. I am just hoping that they don't use this basically Krillin-centric episode and maybe even two episodes to make fun of Krillin because I know Toei does it and it is basically just a Toei thing. It's not really in the manga that much and I mean, but Monkey Krillin can be funny, I guess, but like Krillin is much more than that and I think even Dragon Ball Z Abridged can tell you that. So I hope this doesn't just turn into an episode where we go around and see how many more points we get on the Krillin owned counter. So that was Dragon Ball Super episode 74. I think it's one of my favorite slice of life episodes of Dragon Ball Super so far. It had some really nice character moments, kind of character development, and for like the first time in ages Toei actually trusted the day to be saved by someone who wasn't Goku or the gods. This was a Gohan-centric arc, even if it was only two episodes, and it was really nice and it really explored Gohan's character, and I really, really enjoyed it. Even if all we got out of this was, like, Dragon Ball Heroes cards of Super Great Saiyan Man, I'm still going to say this was a good success because it did some stuff that I really, really enjoyed. While it is making me a little concerned and seeing that I don't think that Gohan's role in the Universal Survival arc is going to be particularly big at all, just given what was going on in these last two episodes, at the very least, at the very least, we would have had these. We would have had this mini arc, and this mini arc was really, really fun. It's the most they've ever done with Gohan's character since basically, you could say Resurrection F, or maybe episode 52. And this time it wasn't just an episode just justifying as to why Gohan is going to be off screen for the rest of existence. So yeah, definitely I enjoyed it. Two more weeks of filler to go, two more episodes of filler to go, and Universal Survival Arc will start at episode 77, which is somewhat odd because judging by episode synopses, that's also going to have a little bit of slice of life stuff as well, so I don't know. That's, that sounds a bit interesting. I don't exactly know how that Universal Survival Arc is going to start, but either way, god damn it, Dragon Ball Super, just keep doing slice of life forever because you're just so good at it. I mean, I like, I like your stuff as well that isn't slice of life, but you just hit it home so well sometimes. So this is Gabby, signing out, and I'll see you all next week. Bye, guys.